What exactly is the dependence of Georgia on Russia's economy and what matters for Georgia more, Russian or the EU market? ICET's economist Yaroslava Babic talked to the checkpoints. Yaroslava, thank you for being with us and um, taking our questions for, for BMG and the tech checkpoints. Um, being Ukrainian, I know how tough this war is on you. Uh, what is the situation right now and what could be some of the spillover um, effects, uh, economic effects on um, on Georgia and the rest of the world? Right, Elena, this is, uh, this is very tough time uh, for Ukraine for the world, uh, also for Georgia. Uh, unfortunately, this uh, war comes uh, uh, right, uh, right as the world, um, as uh, countries started emerging from COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, so uh, unfortunately, the, um, uh, the starting point, the macroeconomic indicators right now uh, are worse than they were just two years ago before the pandemic started. So that adds uh, to the risks uh, that we see. So the main, the main risks um, uh, that, are, uh, that are going to affect Georgia and the world uh, have to do, of course, with, um, uh, uh, with prices. Uh, we already see uh, energy prices uh, have risen. I mean, the, um, um, they have risen in the past year due to the pandemic, um, uh, pandemic effects, uh, but they are likely to rise more depending on how long um, the war is going to last. Uh, so then uh, the crucial, uh, the crucial uh, price that we are looking at here is uh, wheat. Um, both Russia and uh, Ukraine account for about a quarter of the world's uh, wheat supply, and this is, uh, this is a very, mm -hmm. um, very high significant dependency high dependency. Yeah. These, uh, yeah, bo uh, both countries are wheat, uh, wheat exporters. Uh, and for Georgia in particular, that, that can have significance. So, of course, Ukraine is, uh, we know that the situation is, is tough here, but the people are holding on. And from what I heard last, uh, last polls, is that 76% say the country is on the right track. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And oh, 60, so more nice. than 60% believe in the uh, victory that will come, you Slava, know, Slava, Slava, Ukraine, that's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's the only comment <laughs> that I have. Uh, thank you, yes, and so, uh, so um, given, uh, given that the determination and given the world efforts to, um, you know, to basically support Ukraine and uh, help uh, Ukrainian people win this war, uh, I believe that uh, these hopes will be realized. Um, now, what are the risks for Georgia? This is, uh, um, this is the slide that shows uh, Georgia's dependence on the uh, Russian economy in 2021. Yeah, let's start from experts. So we see that dependence on Russia overall is, uh, is not very high. Uh, 14%. It's it's high, but it's not catastrophically high. Um, of course, you can we can see that uh, EU share uh, is a bit higher. Um, uh, also, we can see that Azerbaijan is pretty high. So, but uh, here, together with Ukraine, Russia and Ukraine exports, uh, um, uh, Georgian exports to Russia and Ukraine account for about one fifth of uh, of the total. This is pretty significant. Yes. And uh, and uh, more importantly, particular products are vulnerable. For example, um, uh, as of you know last year, around 60% of Georgian wine, close to 60% of Georgian wine, goes to Russia. Uh, around 40% uh, of um, of mineral waters. Um, around 44% of uh, ferro alloys, which is also a significant uh, export. As far as Ukraine, uh, the dependence on Ukraine is mostly uh, on um, fertilizers. Around 38% of fertilizers are exported uh, to Ukraine. Of course, Georgia would have to find uh, other markets and to lessen its dependency on the Russian market. Yes, in there, co there, there comes uh, my question. What should the private sector do in, in, in these uh, circumstances? Because uh, I said, together with many other think tanks, uh, has been warning uh, the private sector that such a um, uh, dependency, uh, let's say not high dependence, but growing dependency mm -hmm. on Russian market uh, would result 
about uh, something like this. Of course, we could not have uh, envi envisaged uh, um, neither pandemic nor uh, almost a third world war in 21st century, uh, the century which should have been a century of diplomacy rather than armed war. Um, uh, but yes, uh, uh, we still saw uh, this growing dependency on, on Russian market. What should be Georgian uh, private sector's stance? Should it join other businesses mm -hmm. that uh, uh, say no to the Russian market or what is the way out there? Um, uh, right now, um, as far as sanctions are concerned, uh, the Georgian companies don't have to make a choice, uh, really, because nobody is banning exports of uh, wine or uh, you know, other products uh, to Russia, even ferro alloys. What is uh, banned, I think, are strategic uh, exports, uh, which Georgia doesn't uh, doesn't have, doesn't trade with Russia. So uh, there are no formal bans that uh, Georgia uh, would uh, would have to choose to join or not. Yes, but there is this um, context of uh, 400 global business players, uh, um, for example, McDonald's, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Microsoft, I mean, uh, leaving uh, mm -hmm. Russian, I mean, uh, it is uh, the, the, the picture, the overall picture is <clears throat> is much bigger than than what we right, have Right, right. So the, uh, definitely, you know, doing business uh, increasing business with Russia or somehow um, uh, taking advantage of the situation would be a devastating reputational effect for Georgian businesses. Uh, but uh, I don't see that uh, Georgian businesses would be, uh, would be doing that because uh, the uh, level of support inside we Georgia see these indicators. is very high, right? I mean, and, uh, um, no, but uh, th there will be other difficulties for them to trade. Russian market may not be formally closed, but uh, because of the SWIFT uh, related sanctions, the payments uh, will be restricted, uh, will be difficult to make. Um, in case of Iran, when Iran was uh, banned from SWIFT, one third of its trade uh, disappeared. Mm -hmm. Um, so essentially, it makes it doesn't make the entire trade disappear, but uh, it, it makes it more difficult. So there will be no uh, pragmatic business logic in working exactly. with Russian markets. Exactly right. right. Plus uh, the fact that ruble has uh, has sunk uh, in value, uh, and this uh, makes Russia less likely to to afford even products uh, even in Georgia. So they have to conserve somehow their their foreign exchange and uh, uh, there might be some ruble transactions but uh, but this is again a question so we would see i think we would see a um, decline significant decline in exports to russia and reorientation so, to so the decline European in in, in in, in this number, right? In this, this number, number, right, percent. right. So definitely wine is one of the uh, products that have been sanctioned by Russia in the past. So mm -hmm. we have yes. a foothold into the, the European that, that's market. That's why we have this market basically <laughs> here. That's because true. that was in, uh, during Russia's embargo in 2006. Mm -hmm. uh, Georgian wine explored the uh, Chinese market. And that's right, that's right. So China, uh, EU, uh, Ukraine were all markets where Georgian wine branched out, and that in the long run proved to be a positive thing exactly. for the business. So um, I think this time uh, there will be also this tendency to reorient itself uh, and uh, become more competitive on, on these markets. Yes. Uh, what about uh, imports and, uh, and you know, FDI? FDI. And, so and uh, let me talk a little bit. Remittances, yeah, remittances is, also, is an yeah. interesting actually uh, figure. You see that uh, we depend less on Russia. Uh, now, then, for example, on uh, on uh, EU mm -hmm. uh, and um, uh, slightly more than USA. <laughs> so, um, uh, what is going on here? If we compare with 2008, the share of remittances uh, coming to Georgia from Russia was around 63 percent. So, more than half, six, uh, more than 60 percent, we were dependent on uh, people working in Russia and sending money here. Now, this dependency is much less. Uh, it's half of what it was in uh, 2015. So this dependency has been decreasing and I think it will decline even, even more. And this is 
uh, a good thing uh, for for Georgia. Definitely. Of course, in the yeah, in the short run, that means that some people will not be able uh, to to send money from from the places where they work. But, but it means much less for the uh, overall economy. Uh, that's right. Yes, that's right. So we overall, could have the economy, expected. Yeah, the economy of Georgia will not be as affected as it would have been in the past. So FDI, you can see, foreign direct investment is not that big. This is um, Achilles' yeah. heel for for Georgia's economy. Unfortunately, for quite a number of years. That's now. right. So uh, in imports, this is an interesting uh, interesting figure because you can see 10% here, which is quite low. Um, uh, and 4% uh, in Ukraine, right? But if we go to the, the next slide, for example, we mm -hmm. could see that um, the Let dependence go to the on yeah, certain... That's uh, oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, that's, sorry, sorry, sorry. that's not right. This is the here. Yes. That's the slide. So if we go to the next slide, we can see that the dependence on uh, both Ukraine and Russia are high in particular products. So cereals like buckwheat and uh, mm -hmm. wheat and uh, other grains, 87% comes from, from the Russian market. Um, uh, we can see that uh, as far as edible oil, um, uh, the, the oil, the cooking oil, 62% uh, comes from Russia. Uh, energy products, we are dependent on electricity, gas, diesel, uh, around 20%. It fluctuates uh, based on the, on the season, uh, but still, the, well, for now, the, 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 now the dependence is not, is not as high. Yeah, this, uh, this slide uh, to me actually says that where Georgia managed to have uh, diversification and that's energy is uh, like uh, less uh, uh, less problematic now. now That's for right. Georgia the energy is very if encouraging. If were high, yes. Uh, if Europe could uh, could boast that number, exactly, exactly. they would be very very happy. We all mm. of us would be in a better <laughs> position actually. <laughs> That's right. But still, the energy prices uh, have climbed up, and uh, uh, if they increase, um, let's say, twenty percent more to one hundred twenty dollars a barrel, one hundred thirty dollars a barrel, uh, we could uh, we could see a rise in inflation in uh, in Georgia as well. So that, um, based on the past experience, it could add uh, two, three percentage points to, to inflation. Um, so it's still, there is still going to be a significant spillover effects, economic spillover effects, uh, but the dependence is not as high now as it was. Um, so, in, f in as far as tourism um, is concerned, yes. And uh, here, just uh -huh. sorry for yeah. interrupting, but here um, I don't see sugar, and I had to mention <laughs> that. <laughs> I had yes, to mention that right. in, 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 in this um, in these circumstances. And no, our sure. viewers <laughs> understand exactly what I mean, uh, <laughs> I mean under that. Mm. But if we like add up uh, add up the 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 the, the, the numbers here. Mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, share of Russia and share of Ukraine, we definitely see that, uh, for example, flour products, flour, yes, yeah. it's, 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 uh, it's very a high, yeah, so yes, around uh, 60 percent. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, of course, we'll have, uh, we could find other markets, but that would mean buying at a, at a higher price. Yes, yes, exactly, mm -hmm. of course. Uh, um, deficit of products mm -hmm. in 21st century is a, it, yeah, it, it started is a actually before the pandemic so uh, uh, not, uh, sorry the, before the pandemic and during the pandemic this tendency for price uh, food price uh, increase um, became stronger and we already saw a 30 percent increase in the food prices around the world in Georgia, food prices increased by 17% yes. just last year. So this is a significant share. Uh, and that means that uh, people who are most vulnerable, who are poor, will suffer most. Because where do they get the calories? Most of the calories is from bread. Uh, and this is why uh, there is another... And probably SME sector also, because they have less... Uh, 
leverage to to diversify really uh, in in a, in a short uh, exactly, period of time. Exactly. So SMEs, uh, um, uh, build businesses that are the, that are vulnerable to these uh, small businesses and businesses that have established ties, and uh, would be difficult for them to reorient. Yes, themselves. and we should remember that these are the segments that have already been hit very strongly mm -hmm. uh, by the pandemic as well. That's so right. That so the support for SMEs, the support for vulnerable groups uh, should should increase in Georgia. The, uh, the Georgian uh, government should look, uh, should keep an eye on the financial sector, which is the lifeblood of the economy. Right now, it's it showed quite to be quite resilient and strong in the face of the pandemic. Uh, do you think there is a, a room for um, for cutting some um, some taxes? Because that's what the business is asking for right now. Mm -hmm. That's uh, VAT tax and that's the revenue tax. Uh, that would mean the increase in, in government uh, deficit. That would mean definitely it's not an easy solution, uh, but it could be it could be done. Uh, along with um, uh, with other measures, so definitely uh, borrowing is right now more difficult. But working with uh, multinational partners, with the uh, international development organizations, could help Georgia or, or overcome. Sorry again for interrupting. We uh, we diverted from from tourism. You mentioned tourism. Uh, What's going on? Yeah, here? so tourism is a very important uh, part of Georgian economy. Not be, uh, just for the balance of payments overall, but because it it is a source of cash for exactly. most um, um, uh, for people who are um, otherwise are not employed for informal mm -hmm. uh, employment um, and we can see that uh, Russia does have a significant share in tourism spending um, so this comes from the GNTA survey of visitors uh, although the Russian overall uh, share in tourism uh, visitors is not that high it's around 12 percent um, uh, if uh, if um, if we consider the figures how much russian tourists spend in georgia they spend less significantly less than let's say european mm -hmm. tourists uh, this particular share of um, uh, eastern europe europe and especially now when the world is emerging from the pandemic when people are hungry for a bit of normalcy and travel um, and uh, experience. Uh, so uh, I think this is a good time for Georgia to welcome this high pain um, you know, tourist, uh, tourists from Europe. Of course, it will be more difficult than hosting Russian tourism because their expectations for quality in Europe are higher and expectations from the infrastructure, from services are higher. So Russian market was uh, quite a bit easier for Georgia, but still uh, it's worth, um, just like with wine back in uh, 2006, just um, it's, uh, it's motivation it's for more mo diversification. That's right. right? That's right. Yes. So uh, this uh, picture uh, actually tells me that uh, it's a big deal. Uh, I mean, Russia's default, all the problems, of course, will have a spillover effect, but it's not as a big deal as some say? Uh, I think uh, there are significant risks, so it depends on how uh, the war progresses and how soon it will end, what will be the scenarios. Uh, but I do think, uh, my personal opinion is that COVID pandemic was a much bigger crisis for Georgia. And Georgia uh, withstood, Georgian economy overcame this combination of uh, fiscal policies, combination of uh, um, um, financial sector policy support. Um, so this, uh, this crisis uh, will, uh, in my opinion, have less of an impact than, than the COVID. Given, uh, given the fact that uh, uh. There won't be another war in, in, in Georgia. And there That's won't right. Be, uh, yeah, there are significant there geopolitical be, yes, risks. Exactly. And uh, if uh, the situation is uh, frozen somehow or uh, unresolved, uh, then, uh, then it's possible that uh, investors, foreign investors, might think it's too risky to to put their money in Georgia. Yeah, um, that's that's the, uh, the 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 main risk that is uh, that involves uh, investor sentiments and investor expectations. Mm -hmm. Definitely, which we thought would be uh, like the the first thing to work on for the uh, uh, fast uh, recovery. <laughs> 
and after yes, after yes. pandemic. Which and I think I think the fact that Georgia is signaling European aspirations uh, is a, is a strong uh, reputational factor, but also a signal for. Uh, European investors, uh, uh, American investors. Um, that yeah, this is this is the country that. Uh, yes. that here, you can here I on. come uh, to my closing question, and thank you for your time again. Um, um, and I think that's very logical to ask that in the context that you have just uh, mentioned. What should be Georgia's stance uh, in? Um, uh, in joining the, the international sanctions and what that uh, would that mean mean for Georgia because some of the big uh, businesses that you have mentioned uh, which are driving our exports um, uh, there we see uh, uh, Russian um, uh, investments right mm -hmm. uh, so w what does it mean for Georgia to be part of the international sanctions and how that is related to the reputation that you just mm -hmm. mentioned? Um, uh, I think the businesses themselves, uh, they, are, they are very sensitive to, to these reputational effects. And uh, just like Europe is dependent on gas uh, from Russia, uh, Georgian business is also dependent on, on some critical exports. So uh, the right message could be that we are going to have a plan for how to exit the Russian market uh, if this uh, if this war continues in uh, in this way. And uh, and I know that you don't want to mention that, but I will uh, say that and not what we hear from the government that. Uh, you know, this is the final decision and we won't be thinking about joining the sanctions. That's I think that's not a good thing to say, to say because that means that the, um, uh, it's a signal. It's basically a signal that uh, um, uh, taking sides, which Georgia should be very careful about. Georgia has, uh, has European aspirations. You saw from, from uh, all of these um, uh, numbers here that we are more dependent on the EU than we exactly. are dependent on Russia. So which market would be worse to lose for us, the European market or the Russian market? Mm -hmm.